can't see the end in the beginning of another call. I've actually had to reduce the sensitivity of our microphones out there in the past because it's so loud and there's actually so many calling at once. Um, and what's also cool about this is if you were to listen to this, you just hear a total wall of noise and not really to be able to discern anything. Um, but with, it, with the spectrograph, you can clearly see up here, um, these are actually spring peeper calls over top of the gray tree frog. So there's two calls happening at once. These are some of the common species that we do find on the park. This is by no means a representative sample of everything that's out there. Um, I'm primarily monitoring in locations that have standing water year round. So there's other species out on the park such as the wood frog that breed in temporary pools and things like that that I'm not going to get on these recordings. Um, many of these look very similar to each other to, in appearance such as the American toad and the Fowler's toad. Um, very hard to differentiate um, with an actual animal itself, but you can see their calls vary very greatly. So with a recording, very easy to discern. All right, and now I'm gonna talk about our fish monitoring and our other projects. Um, so our, how do I, this one? Yep. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, um, so our fish monitoring happens at five sample sites, not the same seven that the amphibians happens at. Um, so a lot of these are the same as you heard like Jen and Jeremiah talking about our entrance wetlands, Leo's Landing, Thompson's. Um, so this is where they're located on the map. Um, they do overlap with the amphibian monitoring, but it's not in all the same locations. So our sampling methods for our fish monitoring is we mainly use a seine and we do two to ten pools per sample site and we do each sample site at least once a month. We can do additional to that, but we try to keep it at at least once a month. Um, we also have in the past used a fike net, which we deploy in the morning. It stays out there for several hours, and then you come back later on and you collect what's in that and identify. Um, but we did not use that this past year. It's been used, I think, in 2020 and 2021. Um, maybe just 2021. Um, but like I said, we monitor each site at least once per month in May through September. And when we get these fish, we just identify their species, count how many we have of each species, and then we return them. We don't keep any of them. The only thing that we won't return is invasives. You can't return an invasive fish back to the water. So these are some of the common fish that we find out there. A um, couple different types that we found them spawning at Leo's Landing the one time. So I have a cool video that I had to take out because it was making our PowerPoint really big and hard to, hard to load, but um, it's a really cool video where you actually like see them swimming all over top of each other. I don't know. So that was really cool to see one day. Um, these are some other common fish. Obviously the round goby, that's an invasive, but there are lots of them. Um, so we have those, and then the rest of these are all native fish. Next is our macroinvertebrate sampling. So this was added in 2020. Um, it is also at the same five sites as fish monitoring is located at. And the methods for this is we use the D-nets um, to collect our samples. What we do is we like run it along vegetation that is emerging from the water for a certain set amount of time at each site. And then we collect everything that's in the net and we preserve it with ethanol. Um, we have our lovely team of interns sit over trays um, filled with ethanol later and pick out all the macros for us. So we're very grateful to them. Um, and then this year we're actually sending those samples down to Allegheny College and they're gonna help us identify. So that's really helpful. Um, and then we use that to calculate a macroinvertebrate diversity index to get an idea of water quality in our sites. Um, I'll elaborate a little bit more. We wanna know that information just so that we can see like it's another way to indicate how well are our wetlands coming back with their restoration efforts. So if there's really good water quality, that's a great sign for us. And if there's not, maybe it's a sign that we need to look into that location a little bit more. And then our muscle monitoring, this one's my favorite personally. Um, so we're looking at union in mussels. Um, they're a family of freshwater bivalve mussels and they've been decreasing in population on Presque Isle State Park since the 1980s. In recent years, they were shown to be missing from many Presque Isle State Park habitats where they used to be prevalent. And the last study on that had been in 2013, so we looked into it again starting in 2020. Um, this decline is likely due to the introduction of invasives. So not just plant species, but also animal species such as zebra mussels, quagga mussels, and the round goby. So you can see our lovely photos um, with our tagged mussels. That's actually an invasive snail. 
So methods for this, there's four sampling locations that we use. Um, some of these overlap, some of them don't. So ones that do are Leo's Landing, Marina West, and Thompson Bay. Those overlap with all the rest of our monitoring. And then we also added in Perry's Monument. So we visit each of these sites once per month. And the way that we search for mussels is via snorkeling. So we go out there in snorkel gear and we carry these little mesh bags and you just snorkel the transect. So as you see, my, I have cats as my snorkel. These are two different snorkelers. You start at opposite ends of the transect and you each swim up and down columns that are about one and a half meters because that's what your view is. If there was like, if the water was really cloudy, it would obviously be a narrower field of view but um, this is generally what we follow. So you start at opposite ends and you swim up and down until you meet in the middle and you hopefully don't run into each other, but we totally have. Um, <laughs> and the whole time that you're in there, you're just looking to see if you can see the muscles sticking up. Um, we have noticed that sometimes of year, they like really hide more than others. So that's been interesting to us, but they're kind of just sticking up out of the water a little bit. Um, so, we're each holding a rope also. We have like the ends marked with rebar and we put rope between the two pieces of rebar and then we have rope that's 50 meters long that we hold. So as we swim out, we know where our end point is because we can't go any farther. So there's us, that's Sean, that's me. Um, and then we also have a shore team that has to be on shore while we are in the water. We can't have two people in the water and no one on shore because that would be an unsafe situation. So we always have to leave, have at least one shore person. Um, they're ensuring the safety of the snorkelers and they're also taking the mussels from us because sometimes if you collect 10 mussels, you want to hand those off before you're done sampling your whole transect. They'll just give us a new mesh bag. We'll continue where we stopped and they'll start processing them. Um, and they are the ones who measure length, width, and height of the mussels as well as put these little tags on them that you guys can see. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> so that's the general overview of the different things that we monitor for. Um, we don't have all of our data processed yet for this year, so we don't have that up there for you guys. But once again, save acknowledgments, pretty much everyone else has given. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not able to return invasives, so they generally are left in the woods. <laughs> yeah. That being said, I, I maybe have a pet goby in the back <laughs> that we use for our education to show students what an invasive species is. Did you, did you find mussels at all four of the sampling locations, or only in Thompson Bay, or where were they? Yeah, so we only found the mussels at one location. Um, we do continue trying to, like, this year, we were going around to multiple different locations that I don't even have listed.